Hello everyone, welcome back to the second day of the 2020 Husky Robotics Virtual FLL Camp. This is Anaya again, and today we will be teaching programming, except going into a more deeper understanding of programming and its concepts and its coding blocks. If you were not able to attend yesterday's session, which was day one of programming, the videos are available on our website under the daily videos link. They will be available all week for this camp and for approximately two weeks after the camp is over. So feel free to complete that and then complete this video. So let's get started. So yesterday, the challenge task was to show a robot's mood before and after exercise, as well as adding coding blocks between the moods to act like exercise. We got so many different amazing sample student responses yesterday, so if you would like to see some other examples, check out the student submissions tab under the camp resources section on the website. Keep in mind, you can always send submissions to me or the other camp instructor, Alex Bitzner, by emailing us your submissions. So this was my sample answer, just like all the other participants made an answer. If you have any questions on the challenge task or my sample answer, please feel free to contact me. So yesterday, we focused on the motors and the brain of the robot. Today, we will focus on the sensors, as well as some other more advanced aspects of programming. Remember, today's content is a little harder than yesterday. If you have any questions on yesterday's content or today's content after the video is over, please feel free to reach out to me via email. So in FLL, you can use and code a large range of sensors, which are these cool looking things in the picture on the right. They basically detect motion or a specific thing around the robot instead of coding a specific aspect of the robot like a motor does. So there are many different types of sensors. One is touch sensors, which completes an action when pressed against. There's the color sensor, which completes action when detects specific a color, color. There's the ultrasonic sensor, which completes actions when specific distance between sensor and another object is measured. There's the gyro sensor, which detects how many degrees the robot has turned based on an original orientation or position. There's the infrared sensor, which measures the distance through a beam, like a laser gun, or a beacon, which is similar to the ultrasonic sensor. And there is a calibration sensor, which is used to reset all the sensors. I found that in FLL, the sensors that my team used the most often were the touch sensor and the color sensor. So those are the most easiest and versatile to program and use, so I often recommend that those are the ones that you should use. So when coding sensors, each sensor has a specific thing that triggers the sensor. So like I said earlier, that outside thing like someone touching the sensor, that triggers the sensor to do something. So when you're coding the sensor, you code what happens once the trigger thing happens. So in the picture on the right, the pink blocks that are shown in the pictures are the trigger blocks. So like on touch pressed, when the touch sensor is pressed, it'll do something.